where the Spitfire came from. Technically speaking, the Battle of Britain in terms of uh, aircraft and equipment was uh, somewhere in between. Uh, the, the, the new world came later with the Mustang and the, the later marks of Spitfires and the, and the Tempests and all this. While during the Battle of Britain, listen to them. It's not the same noise, it's yeah. not shrieking. What a beauty. During the Battle of Britain, the uh, Hurricanes and Spitfires did have the, uh, uh, the, the exhaust pipes, making them uh, more... They were whispering and not shrieking like they did a few months or years later. And the Blenheim. The Blenheim was a, a beautiful piece of engineering. It was an aircraft uh, with strange characteristics in the cockpit, for instance. There were knobs and levers located in such a way that uh, you ended up doing big mistakes. But look at that. The Blenheim was entirely, purely Bristol, which is uh, some people would say over-engineered. It was uh, very maneuverable to see it. Uh, it was even said that you could aerobat a Blenheim. Some people did uh, aerobatics with uh, this big twin-engined machine. It's, uh, if you look at this one, it has uh, that flat nose which makes it a bit ugly. But in the air, uh, look at it. It's flown by John Romain, and John is having a ball. Dancing around with a big aircraft like that is really another form of aviation pleasure. With the Blenheim during the period of the Battle of Britain came, came a different, uh, different race of pilot. The twin engine pilots later, they would fly the Bofighter, they would fly the Mosquitoes, and uh, later again they would fly the Canberra. But, uh, and, and that's purely British. These uh, light bombers, they called them light bombers, but in fact they were, they were heavy fighting machines. They were used during uh, the, well, 1939, 1940, they were, they, they, they were the main frame of the bomber command. The big four engines machine did, had not appeared yet. The Blenheim was quite fast and uh, maneuverable, as John demonstrates. But of course, again, it was uh, outclassed in terms of performance compared to the uh, frontline fighters like the Messerschmitt 109.
it was a very elegant airplane and and the uh, and the history of the plane as its roots as a civil aircraft before becoming a bomber in the sky coming from the biplanes the hurricane solo and the three mark ones and Trevor is really having a fit <laughs> these aircraft are different somebody told me if I had the money to have a Spitfire and have a Mark 1. A small engine, but nothing is more harmonious. And at the same time, it's vintage. The Hurricane too. I'm just waiting for somebody to uh, make a Mark 1 into the prototype K5054. That would be nice. There had been one, the wooden replica. Yeah. But we want, a, uh, we want a flying one. Anybody out there, John, you listening? <laughs> K5054, please. Mark with, the, with the blue Bentley paint. Blue Bentley paint, paint and the skid, tail skid. And the skid tail. The Hurricane. That's a... S oh. The Hurricane is a strange machine. It's it really was a very easy aircraft to fly for the time and uh, for instance you could uh, look up front and see something which is different from the Spitfire where the front view is blocked by the engine and the angle of the aircraft uh, when it's on the ground on three points and John Romain landing the, the Blenheim that's it and, and the Hurricane, despite its looks, was uh, quite sleek. And if, of course, during the Battle of Britain, everybody knows that uh, uh, the main effort was, uh, and, the, and, and the bigger results against the German bombers were achieved by Hurricane squadrons. But have you ever seen something as beautiful as a trio of Spit Mark Ones? The Mark One is said to be very, very light under the hand. They say that the best Spits in terms of pure flying are the Mark Ones and Mark Fives. Having flown a Mark 9 only, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's not that bad. <laughs> this looks like one of the most famous photos of World War I, World War II, where you have sun rays coming down obliquely through the picture and the trio of Spitfires turning. And <laughs> We have it for real. It's not an archive. It's for real. Completely surrealistic. John Romain was flying the Blenheim and uh, flying the Hurricane, Mr. Harvey. Rats Radcliffe was flying Spit for one. Mr. Jones is flying Spit for two. Stevenson is flying Spitfire 3 and there is a fourth one, Paul Bonham I don't know if it's Hinton or Bonham flying one of the threes
The Battle of Britain was 75 years ago, this year. It's uh, three quarters of a century, and that's uh, time flies. And it's quite important to have uh, events like that and uh, people like that keeping all this alive. It's of course very important to go to uh, castles from yesterday, time past, and uh, all these places where history has been written. But this is a different way to visit history. I think it's just becoming a, um, realized that Western civilization's aviation history is, is just as important as the castle. Uh, the Battle of Britain, yep. for instance. I mean, it was upon it hinged the future of Western civilization. Those few, those few months. Well, we 